For nearly five decades, Voyager 2 has sailed through the cosmic darkness like a ghost ship of human curiosity, drifting farther from Earth than any machine we've ever built, whispering its final observations into the void. And for most of that time, its transmissions were predictable. Particles, plasma readings, cosmic ray fluctuations, exactly what scientists expected from a probe coasting through the interstellar sea. But everything changed when one transmission included something it was never programmed to capture. An image, not a visual artifact, not a static anomaly, an actual structured high-frequency signature translated into what analysts have begun calling a visual cipher. If you're fascinated by mysteries like this, don't forget to subscribe for more deep explorations of the unknown. At first glance, it looked like a dense cloud of heat and noise pointless, like watching static from an old analog TV. But after enhancement, layering and time-filtered analysis, the form began to shift into something recognizable. It wasn't a star. It wasn't a planet. It wasn't even from within our solar system. And yet it was looking at us. The deeper scientists dug, the more disturbing the image became, not because of what it showed, but because of what was missing around it, light distortions that hinted at a gravitational influence, as if this object wasn't just observing, but bending space itself. And the signal that carried this image came with a spike in radiation, a brief shift in Voyager's orientation, and a drop in system stability, as if something out there reached back and touched it. The image extracted from the Voyager 2 transmission was unlike anything NASA had ever seen. It was layered, not a single frame but multiple overlapping impressions of the same object at different moments, as though time itself had fractured during its capture. When experts analyzed the metadata, they were stunned to discover that the image didn't conform to linear time. Time stamps overlapped, pixel regions looped, and the resolution shifted in fractal patterns that hinted at higher dimensional data compression. This wasn't a photograph. It was a multidimensional event, encoded into a two-dimensional signal. What appeared in the foreground resembled a monolithic shape, sharp and impossibly symmetrical, suspended in a void absent of stars. It wasn't drifting. It wasn't rotating. It was perfectly still, almost as if it had been waiting for the exact moment Voyager would pass near enough to witness it. And then the probe signal degraded, not gradually, but suddenly, as if the act of observing it had been noticed. Simultaneously with the transmission of the image, Voyager 2's instruments detected an inexplicable increase in plasma density surrounding the spacecraft. At the edge of the heliopause, where the sun's influence ends and true interstellar space begins, plasma density should be nearly zero. Instead, reading showed a sudden wall of charged particles ten times denser, than anything previously measured. What disturbed scientists most wasn't just the density. It was the temperature. This plasma was hot. Not star hot, artificially hot. The type of heat generated not by natural phenomena, but by containment, by control, by design. As if something had created a barrier, a membrane separating our solar system from what lies beyond, not to keep things out, but to keep us in. And in that moment, Voyager didn't just record plasma. It recorded a response, a ripple, a pulse of energy that surged toward the probe at a velocity defying known physics, only to vanish inches before impact, as if the void itself had recoiled from our gaze. What followed after the image was even more chilling, a string of binary data in the telemetry logs that initially seemed corrupted, but when run through pattern recognition algorithms, the data revealed complex self-replicating geometric formations. At first, analysts believed it might be compression artifacts or background noise, but then a mathematician noticed something horrifying. The shapes mirrored structures found in deep-sea organisms on Earth, particularly cephalopod nervous systems and certain coral growth patterns. This wasn't random. It was lifelike. It was encoded biological geometry preserved in electromagnetic language. And within the repeating loops, there were breaks, deliberate distortions placed like punctuation marks, a syntax, a language. But here's the real twist. When these patterns were recreated using a simulation, they began to adapt. They responded to environmental variables. They evolved, not metaphorically, literally, as if Voyager 2 had transmitted not just a warning, but a seed. As global space agencies scrambled to decode the image and the geometric signal, 
a final anomaly emerged. Voyager 2's trajectory had subtly shifted, as if something had nudged it, not with force but with intent. Despite being far beyond any known gravitational influence, the probe's orientation adjusted by 3.2 degrees, just enough to realign its high-gain antenna toward an uncharted region of space. And then a second image was captured, or perhaps sent. This one was simpler, an expanding ring of light around the monolith, growing exponentially with every data burst. NASA cut the live feed. Public databases were scrubbed, but not fast enough. A few private observatories managed to record the faint echoes of that transmission and noticed something peculiar. The object Voyager imaged was now emitting a signal of its own, a new frequency, one that mirrors the golden record Voyager carried from Earth. Only this time, the message was not from us. It was to us, and the voice behind it, unmistakable, not human, not synthetic, but familiar, like an echo we didn't know we'd been hearing since the dawn of our species. As astrophysicists delved deeper into the second image and its expanding ring of light, another unexpected phenomenon began to emerge, gravitational lensing, but not from any massive object nearby. Instead, the space surrounding Voyager 2 itself appeared to be warping. Simulations showed that the curvature didn't match any known celestial body. It was centered around empty coordinates, like a hollow gravitational anomaly with no visible source. Some scientists speculated that the space around the probe had become non-Euclidean, curved in ways that defied three-dimensional logic, the kind of distortion you'd expect not near black holes, but near engineered space, artificial corridors, wormholes, hidden passageways carved between dimensions. And the most disturbing part, the distortion wasn't pulling Voyager in. It was following it, like something was crawling just beneath the fabric of reality, keeping pace, mirroring its position across a plane we couldn't see, but that Voyager had somehow exposed with its presence. Soon after Voyager 2's unexpected shift in orientation, engineers at NASA noticed something that made their blood run cold. The probe was responding to its own signal buried within the binary pulse, segments being mirrored back in real time, as if the transmission had bounced off something and returned. But Voyager 2 isn't equipped for two-way communication in deep interstellar space. There's nothing for it to hear, and yet the onboard processors were reacting to the feedback as if in conversation an echo loop. Only the delay wasn't consistent. The signal changed in timing, amplitude, and even tone, responding more rapidly the longer it was observed. What began as a 12-hour delay soon became nine, then six, then three, until eventually the response came before the initial message was even sent. Chronologically impossible, data was being returned from the future. Or perhaps more terrifyingly, the probe was now synchronized with a system outside of time altogether. Under pressure from internal whistleblowers, a group of civilian cryptographers was granted limited access to the original image logs. What they discovered turned curiosity into panic. Hidden in the framing layers of the image, beyond the visual spectrum, was a structure of code so compact, so recursive, that it resembled quantum entanglement encryption. In simpler terms, the image couldn't be decoded without affecting the original signal. Every attempt to analyze it triggered small-scale malfunctions in the system running the code. Software crashes, data corruption, in one case even hardware failure, like it was fighting back. At first they thought it was a glitch, then a virus. But then one analyst asked the question no one wanted to answer. What if it wasn't meant to be read? What if it was never meant for us? What if by trying to open the signal, we were unraveling something bound to deeper systems, something that exists not on our computers, but in us? a mimetic payload, a thought virus. And Voyager had just brought it home. Just when authorities believed they had isolated the anomaly and silenced the public leaks, Voyager 2 sent a third transmission, this time without prompting, without movement, and without corresponding solar interference. It wasn't plasma. It wasn't geometry. It wasn't even a signal in the traditional sense. It was a sound, a harmonic wave modulated with rhythm like breathing, like speech. When converted to audio, listeners described a feeling of immense pressure in their chest and behind the eyes, as if being watched through a telescope stretched across galaxies. The waveform formed a repeating pattern that mirrored the shape captured in the first image. And surrounding that waveform was a spiral of prime numbers, nested in sets of three. 
Some saw it as mathematics, others as ritual. But one linguist from the SETI Institute was more blunt. This isn't a greeting. This is an algorithmic lock. It's telling us that something is coming and we need to choose, respond or run. And as Voyager 2 continued its lonely journey, still transmitting fragments no one dared fully decode, one message echoed above the rest. You have been observed. 